In Lesson 1.3, students continue their investigation of the properties of materials by looking at how materials absorb water. You'll do a quick demonstration to show an absorbency test between wax paper and brown paper towel, and then students will do an absorbency test with paper, plastic, felt, and aluminum foil. One of the main ideas behind this investigation is for students to understand how to conduct a fair test between all the materials that they need to be used in the same way. Students will discover that different materials absorb water to different extents, and they'll see that the properties of certain materials makes them suited for certain purposes. Let's take a look. You'll work with students to design a good absorbency test based on the demonstration that you did. You would ask students if all the materials need to be the same size, if they should all be dipped into the same amount of water, if they should be dipped into the water the same way for the same length of time, and all that will help students understand how to conduct a test in a fair way. So we would leave the materials in the water for the same length of time, we estimate around 30 seconds, and then pull them out and see the differences. When students look at the results, they see that the water moves up into the paper on the far left a little bit, and that the water doesn't move into the plastic. It does absorb into the felt, but it does not absorb into the aluminum foil. And the idea for students is that water is made from water molecules, and that the water molecules interact with the material. They're attracted to the paper and to the felt, but they're not attracted to the plastic and the aluminum foil. Also, the paper and the felt have tiny little spaces for the water to move into. So if the water molecules are attracted to a material and have little tiny spaces to move into the material, they'll absorb into it. Then we can take a look at that using an animation. So here, there's equal sized pieces of paper, aluminum foil, plastic, and felt, and they're gonna be dipped into water, the same amount of water, all at the same time, and be left there for let's say 30 seconds, obviously this is speeded up. But if you look closely, you can see that the water has moved into the paper. You can show students a model of why that happens down at the molecular level. In the case of paper, the water molecules are shown attracted to the paper and also moving up into the little spaces between the fibers. That's the idea here. And if you show, for instance, plastic, here the water molecules it touch the plastic, but they're not attracted to it. There's nowhere to move in, no little spaces or fibers, so there's nowhere for them to travel. And one more, let's say the felt. Here they're attracted to the felt, and there are tiny fibers that make spaces for the water molecules to move through. In the extend part of the activity, we just show students two absorbent materials, a sponge and a towel. And the question is, what makes them absorbent? And we'd like students to say that the water is attracted to the material and there are tiny spaces for the water molecules to move into. For NGSS Standard 2 PS1-2, analyze data obtained from testing different materials to determine which materials have the properties that are best suited for an intended purpose. Students test different materials here. They test paper, plastic, felt, and aluminum foil, and they see which are most absorbent they'll eventually combine the results from this test to what they've done before in the strength test for the next lesson where they'll design a boat that can hold the most pennies without sinking. If you look at the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, planning and carrying out investigations, plan and conduct an investigation collaboratively to produce data to serve as the basis for evidence to answer a question. Students do this. They help design the absorption test. They conduct the test and they determine that there are certain materials that are absorbent and ones that aren't. For disciplinary core ideas, that different properties are suited for different purposes, students see that if you have non-absorbent materials, they may be good for a certain purpose, and absorbent materials may be good for another. And students put that to practice in the next lesson. For cross-cutting concepts, scale, proportion, and quantity, events have causes that generate observable patterns, the causes in this case for absorbency are that the material attracts water molecules and has spaces for the molecules to travel through. And if materials have these properties, it results in an observable result and water will absorb into the material.
So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.